back to Core Swatching series in which I swatch out the entire range of Core. This is episode 7 and we're going to be looking at the warmer blues of the Core range. In this video we are going to be covering Indigo which is made with PB15 column 3, PBK7 and PV19. Indanthrone Blue PB60. Ultramarine Blue PB29. Ultramarine Blue Violet, PV15 and PB29. And finally, we have the Cobalt Blue, which is made with PB28. First up, we have the Indigo and like the Dioxin Violet in the previous episode, this is an intense color. It is so high in tinting strength and you're going to get massive, massive values. This is, of course, a hue. A natural indigo will be very not life fast at all, and that wouldn't be fun. In fact, Quill tends to avoid the very non life fast colours, like there's no alizarin crimson, there's no opera. They want to make sure that your paints and you also your paintings, of course, are more light stable than other brands and some in some companies get indigo mixes a little bit wrong and it doesn't quite feel like indigo and it feels more like indanthro this on the other hand feels a lot like certainly what we in japan call indigo or the in japanese indigo blue and you get this really nice dark mass stone which is what you want some brands don't get this dark and then you get this we call this indigo con. It's not con as in C-O-N, con as in the character which I'll put up here. And I would say it's very close to that. It has a little bit of like a ultramarine undertone, even though there's no ultramarine in here, that's not in the indigo. But for a blend to make sure that it's more light fast, it's a very good replica. And this black coming through here, that's very similar in indigo. It is, however, made with thalos and quinacridone. So it's going to be prone to cauliflowering. So just be careful with your water level when you paint with this color. It is classified as semi-transparent. I would say it's more semi-opaque. I don't know. It's really difficult to figure out the transparency or the opacity of an almost black color on top of a black stripe. So somewhere between semi-transparent and semi-opaque. It's classified as staining and I would say it's semi-staining. It is not that good at the glazing it, it lifts off quite easily because it's only semi-staining however where it really shines is in the color mixes because it has all those intense pigments it's going to be super high in the tinting strength and it's very comparable to the dioxys in purple let's bring that up for comparison this was dioxys in purple you get just as intense color mixes here the Biggest difference here between the Dioxys and Purple and the Indigo is with the Aurelian. It becomes very green when you mix it with the Indigo for the obvious reasons that there's not as much red in the colour mix. So you definitely don't want to have this colour on your palette. If you have a weak tinting strength, it's really going to drown out your all your other colours. But if you have very high tinting strength colors like my palette then it's a really good addition it is made with pb15 colon 3 which is the thalo cyanine blue green shade pbk7 which is the lamp black which is the black that you're seeing coming through here that's really important in indigo and then pb19 which is quinacridone violet in terms of dispersion i I don't even hazard a guess how far this color would go if you let it. It will go very far. The master spreads quite a lot, but you get really strong halo. And I see dark rims around here that's telling me it wants to go further and further. So this, if you want a wild time with your painting, this is an excellent choice. You're also going to get different shades happening depending on where that PVK settles and then where that 
PV 15 column 3 goes. It's really, really interesting and it will add a lot of drama and texture to your painting as well. However, I would embrace cauliflowering and make or plan a painting where cauliflowering is part of the painting because you're going to get a lot of that happening with this colour. Then we have the Indanthrone Blue, which is still a pretty intense colour, but it's not quite as intense or as dark as the Indigo. And it is more of, it is definitely closer to a Ultramarine Blue than to an Indigo. It's, it's the middle colour and you definitely... And most of the time you find either in Danthron or Indigo on somebody's palette if they have one of these two colours. Not both because they're pretty similar. Although I have to say with with Core, there's a bigger difference between Indigo and in Danthron Blue than I've seen in other brands such as Daniel Smith. Those the colour these two colours in that brand is less or more similar than these two, so you might find it both colours. But I tend to either have Indanthrone or Indigo on my palette. Let's get on with the colour. And this is a very, very intense, almost like a dark royal blue colour. And you get nice gradation. Not quite the five stages I created, but it's pretty good. You get four stages. It's not very prone to cauliflowering even though it's not a granulating colour. So that's really good to know. So if you are looking for an intense blue, but that isn't granulating, but you don't want to worry so much about cauliflowering, then this is a really good option for you. Beautiful colours happening here, and you just get such a wide range in value. You can definitely carry on further down and get this colour even lighter. It is classified as semi-opaque and I think I would agree with that. Again, very difficult to tell the opacity of a navy colour over a black line. It is classified as staining and definitely this is very staining. It's You can see how staining is, you can see how little has lifted and also how the signs have got stained just from having that water go over it with a brush. I think it is a good glazer, but you see this line. I think this is more to do with the amount of water uh, in the second glaze and it went that way because if it was to do with the colour being a not good at glazing, you would get a lighter line here as well, which we don't. So I would say that this is more from the amount of water because the value changes so much with the different amount of water you're going to put into it because it has such a wide range in value. So I would say that don't worry about that line, it's going to be a decent at glazing. It is high tinting strength but not nowhere near as high tinting strength as you can see as this one. This one the colour mix is, is much more intense than this one. So if you don't want quite so intense a colour then this might be a good middle ground although i would say that the ultramarine blue coming up next is a good middle ground and this is more for the a little bit more adventurous and then the indigo is for the super adventurous people who really like the high tinting strengths not to say that people who like low tinting strengths colors aren't adventurous i'm just digging a hole now so i'm gonna stop <laughs> but yeah so it's a good next step up if you want to intensify your tinting strength on your palette and then maybe go on to the indigo if you want to go higher. It is made with PV60 which is the Indanthron Blue. Again, thank you Core for being so reliable with your pigment choices. In terms of dispersion, I think this will go far again. The Maston kind of lost itself unlike the indigo you know, you had a good master, it really dispersed, which probably means it's going to go really far. These two are both going to go really far in terms of dispersion. And you're going to have a great time, whichever colour you go for. Then we have the Ultramarine Blue, and this is a very intense blue. It, I would say that the Schmincke's Ultramarine Finest is one of my favourite blues because it's nice and intense. I would say this is on par. It's very intense blue. Let's, let's look at just that. That is, under these lights, it's almost glowing in how blue it is. 
you get really good gradation it, although you don't get quite five stages but it's core color you it's rare for you to be able to get five clear stages with the core because they're kind of designed to not follow those kind of rules it is a good gradating minimal color flowering any granulating colors uh, you're going to have easier time doing gradation and avoiding cauliflowering with and this is the same here you, you don't get any cauliflowering but you do get a lot of granulation happening from about stage two three and four and then it kind of gets too pale by stage five but yeah you get the most amount of granulation i would say in stage three it is classified as semi-transparent and I would say it's somewhere between semi-transparent and semi-opaque. I can definitely see some deposit on the black line. It is classified as semi-staining and I would agree with that. It is surprisingly a good glazer because with granulating colors, even if there's any lifting going on of the first layer when you put down the second layer, the granulation kind of fuzzes that from showing up so you can kind of get away with a bit more easier time in terms of glazing with a granulating color in terms of tinting stress for an ultramarine blue this is a high tinting strength ultramarine blue you get really nice strong mixes with it you get this gorgeous granulating strong fresh green look happening here with the aurelian you get a nice very subtle violet with the blue coming through in the granulation with the queen rose of course with the thaler blue yellow shade it's not going to do quite as much ultramarine blue is like such a good all-rounder it's going to mix well with a lot of your colors it's easy to put down because you don't have to worry about cauliflowering you're going to have pretty good control of the color degradation because it's relatively heavy uh, pigment It is made with PB29, which is, of course, the ultramarine blue. And in terms of dispersion, I think this is hugely wild and interesting dispersion. Look at all these arms coming off it. It is so cool. It's definitely fun. And it's also telling me that actually these arms aren't to do with cauliflower, because as we said, it doesn't suffer from cauliflowering, so this is something else, which is totally awesome. If you know what this is, uh, and it's not cauliflowering, please let me know in the comments down below. Then you get this almost like solar flares happening of the halos spreading out. It's not going to spread out as much as the indanthron blue and the indigo. The halos are much weaker than that, but it's, I think... If you are interested in using this paint for dispersion, you are looking for that wildness in the mass tone. Then we have the ultramarine blue violet, and this color is definitely more muted than the ultramarine blue. So you think ultramarine blue violet is just going to be like a violet version of that? No, it's a little bit more toned down. It's actually a lot more toned down. The ultramarine blue is very intense. It's one of the most intense blues out there on the market. So these two, although they share a name, they're not quite the same in characteristics of... In, they are similar in characteristics in terms of their ultramarines, but in terms of the hue, they're not quite similar. It's much more muted. It is a violety blue and it's not very good at the gradating. There's a very, very, very defined <laughs> divide here where stage one and two is quite dark and then three, four, five is very pale in comparison. It's not an even lightening up of the value as we go down here. So definitely you're going to need to put a little bit more effort in to make sure that this stage and this stage blends nicely on your painting. But at least it doesn't suffer from cauliflowering, so you don't have to worry about that. In terms of opacity, it's classified as semi-transparent and I would say it's semi-opaque. There's quite a lot of deposit here, but it's somewhere between the semi-transparent and the semi-opaque. It's classified as non-staining. I would argue that this is semi-staining. It's definitely not non-staining. In terms of glazing, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. 
he doesn't get a mega amount of lifting, but it's also not the cleanest of blazes. In terms of color mixes, I think this is where this color shines because you get this nice, rich, deep lime green color. It's almost like if you know pickled limes, it's that kind of color. It's really great color. You get a nice subtle violety color here. And I think you get definitely a lot more change with the phthalo blue than the ultramarine blue did because there is that more difference between the two hues. It is made with two pigments, PV15, which is the ultramarine violet, and the PV29, the ultramarine blue, therefore calling the color ultramarine blue violet makes total sense. In terms of the dispersion, you get mass down here, you get a huge amount of halo rain going that way. I don't know why it didn't go that way. Maybe the color dried with this side a little bit higher, but it does travel quite well. But obviously it's not gonna go far as the phthalos and the indigo and that kind of color is, is going to go. And then finally for this video, we have the cobalt blue. It is a very intense cobalt blue, actually. It's got a very clear blue color, lovely. You get a lot of granulation happening here from about stage two, three and four. You get a lot, lot of granulation, although you do get some light cauliflowering happening here. So you do have to be a little bit more careful with the, your water with this color than you do with the ultramarine blues and the ultramarine blue violet. But it's still, it's not going to be too hard. It's not a major issue. In terms of opacity, it is classified as semi-opaque, and I definitely agree with that. There's a significant amount of deposits happening here. Classified as semi-staining, I would agree with that. Not very good at the glazing. It does come up really uneven, but you can see here that in the mass down, it comes up quite uneven too. It doesn't finish off in a nice smooth finish. So yeah, it's maybe the glaze with a lighter value than the mass down. In terms of color mixes, it's pretty average in terms of tinting strength it's not too strong it's not too weak it's actually quite strong for cobalt blue compared to other brands so it's not going to disappear on you if you mix it with a strong highly tinting strength color like queen rose does a great job of making that purple and you get a nice strong green there it is made with PV28, which is the cobalt blue. And in terms of dispersion, the mass down goes to about here. And then you get quite strong haloing for a non thalo non queen color. And it will definitely go a little bit further, not like a major amount further, but it will definitely go a little bit further than this box. This month's dot card is the companion dot card to this series. And this month is the cool colors by Core. And in this version, I try to not include colors that we've already tried. So it's doesn't have colors like the hooker's green, which I think is one of the best cool colors Core has. So that you guys get to test out and not double up so much on the colors. So we have the Prussian blue, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, manganese blue, cobalt teal, viridian green, thalo green, and olive green. If you like to try this dot card and if you like to have this land on your doorstep, then then all you have to do is head on over to patreon.com forward slash autocarno and sign up to the perfect tiers. So that's it for this video. What did you think of these five colors? Which one was your favorite? Do let me know in the comments down below. And if this video changed your mind, do also let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know. In terms of these colors, Indigo is the wildest. It's the most highly tinting strengths one. It's also wild, wild in the dispersion. So go for the indigo if you're feeling super adventurous. If you aren't quite so adventurous with how wild and strong this color is, but you still want to be brave and branch out to a more higher tinting strength color, go for the indanthrone blue. It's You're still going to get high tinting strength, but it's not as crazy as the indigo one. The ultramarine blue, I, I could recommend this to anyone 
ultramarine blue is for me is such a standard color for my palette and this is a good one it's nice and intense it's a bright mask tone is nice and bright and you get lots of gradation you get lots of granulation but it's a very fine granulation so if you want something that has a smoother granulation than other brands that might be really strong in granulation this is also a good bet and the cobalt blue, if you want, being wanting a stronger cobalt blue than what's usually available on the market, then I think it's a great choice as well. For me, I think out of these colors, the ultramarine blue, I think is a great choice for me personally, for my palette. If say I don't have the Schmincke ultramarine finest, the coarse one will do just as a good a job. I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, then please press the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't, because I keep looking at my stats and say half of you that watch my videos are new to this channel. So please do subscribe if you're new here and say hi in the comments. Thank you so much for Quall for sending me these paints. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you fancy any of these colors, as always, it's in the links down below. Next video is the cooler blues. So I will see you in the next video. Bye.